Hi, this is August Rose Tarot, and we are talking about alchemy. And the reason I talk about alchemy because alchemy is almost like the the meaning of everything. <laughs> so, with with this, we're going to talk about the elements of first matter. And first matter is what created everything that the source, prime source, or prime material, or dark matter. And the, for us, what is ruled by dark, what rules dark matter is Saturn. Saturn, well, because Saturn rules reality. Saturn is how you want to manifest long, stable, long-term goals on this plane. And, um, but mercury, sulfur, and salt are elements of that dark matter. Um, and in, in whose vow, do you want to say, say hi to Santisma? This is Santisma, Santa Muerte. I'm going to keep her in the shots because she is one of my um, goddesses I honor. So, mercury, sulfur, and, and salt. So, when you're looking at mercury, sulfur, and salt, you're looking at how things manifest on this plane. What everything in, that is manifested has within it and can't separate from it. So, we're the mercury is spirit um and or the spirit the spirit animal element more feminine internal assault is the more masculine express expressive energy or polarity so but mercury when you can't um necessarily totally define these because they will always ebb and flow but mercury will always be the more feminine and salt is more is always a more masculine element and they come together to create that physical thing salt that is the manifested thing salt so mercury itself has duality within it and mercury is usual either neuter or masculine but in in comparison to salt in comparison to i mean sorry sulfur mercury is always feminine in comparison to sulfur and then salt is what is created um, between this marriage of Mercury and so forth. So everything you see has this within them. And if it didn't have this within them, has this masculine feminine element within them, the manifested reality, it will not be able to manif be on this plane. That's my understanding. So if you want to talk about, um, let's say, Twin flames. I do want to talk about that. I don't want to bust anyone's bubbles. Um, but twin flames. If you are someone that manifests on this plane, the salt, to manifest on this plane, you already have the feminine and masculine aspects. You are not looking for your other half. You're not looking for your masculine if you're a feminine, and the feminine masculine isn't looking for the feminine if if he's if, if, if that's the masculine because you both have these aspects within you you don't you can't separate yourself like that um and call it a twin flame because you wouldn't exist without it needs to be this trinity you need this other half within you to exist on this plane so i'm not saying you don't have soulmates but um you don't have somebody that was born for you and only you. Um, the only person that was born for you and only you is you. And it sounds so bad. You And I'm not saying you can't have lasting, loving relationships because that is normal to have lasting and loving relationship. What isn't okay is having someone drag you through, through the mud. So um, mercury and sulfur and the idea of mercury, sulfur, and salt is something that everything has within them and when i go to astrology because i want to talk about astrology not only um twin flames and tarot with astrology you have the planets usually there's 10 planets and uh, each planet except for the sun and moon has rules two signs so and the reason why the sun and moon only rules um uh, only the only rules one sign is because the sun and moon is the masculine feminine aspect of each other so the sun is the masculine for the moon and the moon is the feminine for the sun 
And it is always looking at no matter where it's always opposed Saturn. So that's why they also never go retrograde because they're always opposite Saturn in their natal will and in, in the natal chart is always opposite Saturn. So meaning that the sun, that Leo is always opposite Aquarius, which is a ruler of Saturn, which is ruled by Saturn and cancer is always opposite Capricorn. It is a, a sign that is ruled by Saturn. And again, Saturn is, is, um, reality the force of nature and the sun and moon is something that is internal with you so it's always going up against reality to transform form and grow um with everything else all the other planets will go retrograde and that retrograde energy is um saturnian energy the rx was a symbol for saturn um in uh, i think it was in the middle ages or, or the renaissance era it was a symbol for saturn and it was a symbol for healing. If if somebody wanted to get healed, they'll write a doctor will write RX on a piece of paper, um, the retrograde or that six or the signal for doctors. Like you get a doctor note, so you see the retrograde symbol RX, and put it, um, bless it or pray over it, and put it in the patient's mouth for them to heal, so they can consume it. But we have this energy here. Now I don't want to make it seem like. These the planets, I mean, the signs rule the planets, the planets rule the sign because we are in this physical world. Um, so here the planet is the manifested, uh, manifested aspect of um, of the energies of Taurus and Libra. The masculine feminine energies are, are in this planet and they are combined and united. So the planet is the manifested, um, you have the feminine and then you have the masculine. They all combine to, to each other. So you can't separate Venus from Taurus and Libra. That energy is always going to be there. No matter where Venus is in your chart, you're going to have that energy of Taurus and Libra. So if you have a natal chart, you're going to look and you're looking for Venus. Like my Venus is in the 12th house, but Taurus for me rules the ninth house and Libra rules the second house. So the, even though my 12th house on um, Venus I have a 12th house Venus energy from the ninth house was so that freedom that needs to travel. I'm going to have a love for traveling and I'm going to have, I'm going to have, um, a desire or, um, a want to refine my physical plane, my physical plane, the things I own and I value. And it's going to be, it's going to attribute to the 12th house energy. And if I'm going off tangent, don't worry, I will explain it in later videos, but an example for this Trinity here is in astrology and it goes with everything. And also, if you want to know about um, more about astrology, um, the planets also rules sign r rules um, aspects. So for Venus, Venus rules the aspect of the operation of conjunction, uh, and that and the reason why Venus rules the operation of conjunction is because it creates harmony. It um, creates harmony in between things to create something new. When two things come together, it's a new expression. In Whoseville, that was just a side tangent. So when you have Mercury, Silver, and Salt, um, it is the base understanding of everything you see um, or base understanding of how to operate in astrology or with metaphysics. And it also probably will help explain the above and below realm but i'm gonna cut that out right now we're going to start with mercury sulfur and salt that everything you see every living thing you see should have a masculine and feminine as aspect already within them and they are they should be utilized your masculine and feminine aspects should be utilized to manifest whatever goal you want they should be utilized to to understand your own inner workings um, and it should be utilized to, again, create the person you want, want to become. But I think that's all I have for this video. The next video, I'm just going to see what I'm going to do. Toodles. Have a good one.